It's been a little while. I've been stuck in the dark, gloomy Fiat mines, but today I get to come up and feel the warmth of the sunshine on my face. And of course, as always, we're going to talk about Cardano. If you feel like that thumbnail looks like the least comfortable stadium ever, or if you're finding value in these videos, please consider delegating to the Army of Spies stake pool, ticker AOS. It has been a while. I have been deep, deep in the gloomy, dark fiat mines for a while, and I apologize for that. I definitely meant to be back here faster. I'm not permanently, but permanently back right now. I'm just emerging to see what the sun looks like again, <laughs> just coming out of the, the dark fiat mines for a second to see what the, to remind myself of the warmth of the sun and the natural world and not the subterranean fiat world. But there are some things to talk about in Cardano. So we're going to talk about all of them. But first, and obviously we're going to address Catalyst a tiny bit. We're just going to mention Catalyst a tiny bit. We're not going to talk about different proposals. That's not the kind of thing we do on this channel, but we are going to talk about Catalyst just a tiny bit. Basically, I'm just going to encourage you to vote in Catalyst. But before we do that, there are a couple of things I would like to address. First, it is much better to be in crypto than to be deep in the fiat mines. I think you all already know that. If you listen to this channel, you're probably highly aware it'd be better to be in crypto all the time than to be spending spending most of your day five to seven days a week toiling in the fiat mines. Also, something I've discovered in the last couple of weeks, since the last time we talked, really, I think the peoples of the South Pacific have had something figured out all along that the rest of the world didn't really understand. And I think that's that Kava is much better than alcohol. <laughs> this might be a temporary thing. This might just be a temporary view I'm holding right now. I might, I might turn around and decide this is not at all true because Kava doesn't taste good. It does not taste good, but it does, I think, accomplish a lot of the same goals people have when they're drinking alcohol. See, on a Friday night, you might drink, imbibe a little alcohol. This is great when you're like 21 years old. You 21 year olds, enjoy your alcohol consumption. Here's the problem. When you get old, like me, the recovery is much, 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 much harder. <laughs> you no longer feel like you did in college where you could just kind of drink all night on Friday night, wake up on Saturday, go to the gym and have a great workout. That ends at some point, not for everybody, but I think for a lot of people, myself included, you no longer recover quite as easily once you get a little bit older. What I've discovered about Kava is it accomplishes those same goals you might have after getting off work on a Friday, after you know temporarily emerging from the fiat mines for just a second. Kava accomplishes a lot of those same goals and it is much kinder the next day. That's all I'm going to say about that. On to Catalyst. So we're not going to go through proposals. I know a lot of people are making videos and they're like shilling different proposals or maybe not even shilling the proposals. Maybe they're just encouraging you to vote for certain projects because they represent, you know, important advances in infrastructure, that kind of thing. We're not going to do any of that. I think you are. I think listeners of this channel, all of us together, I think we're pretty smart. I think we can all make those kind of decisions for ourselves. So I'm not going to highlight any different proposals anywhere in this round fun 10 of Catalyst, but I will encourage you to vote. Just go look through the proposals. There's a lot of discussion. It's it's almost the only thing people are talking about right now in Cardano. There's a few other things going on, but almost everybody on Twitter is in Cardano Twitter is talking about Catalyst right now. So I'll let you sift through all that conversation, or even better, you could just come here to cardano.ideascale.com, look at all the proposals, and decide for yourself, even better. But I do highly encourage you to vote in Catalyst. It's your money. It's the community's money. It's all of our money. You might as well decide how it gets spent. Just to start things off, while everything is going swimmingly in Cardano, guess where things aren't going so great? That would be Burning Man. First, they were flooded. Now, they are dealing with fire tornadoes. I, I don't know. If, 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 I, if I go to a festival called Burning Man, first of all, I, 
you probably can't be too surprised. If, if there's going to be fire tornadoes anywhere, it's going to be at a place called Burning Man. Also, <laughs> I don't know what was more of a surprise to them, getting flooded like a day ago or these, it, it kind of looks like multiple fire tornadoes. This is a sign. This is a sign from the aliens or whoever you think is responsible for our weather. <laughs> whoever you whoever you believe is responsible for the weather, it sounds like they don't like Burning Man. In Cardano, as opposed to floods and fire tornadoes, instead on Friday, we had an hour and 40 minute, if I remember correctly, Twitter space between Coin Bureau and Charles. You can find this on the Twitter accounts of Coin Bureau or Charles's account. Meanwhile, our friends over in Bitcoin are having a great time. As always, let me read you this tweet. Just found out I have 2000 on Blue Wallet. That is as good as gone because the devs discontinued their Lightning Network node and I didn't check up on it in the last six months. Crypto user experience stays winning. We're going for mass adoption for sure this time. I think Stake with Pride had it right here. Bitcoin Lightning Network, it's the future. And I think this is why you need to have other scaling plans. If your only scaling plans are state channels, if that's the only means you have to scale your entire network, and it's the very biggest crypto network, you might need to focus more on technological innovation. Nothing against Bitcoin. I think part of the charm of Bitcoin, of course, is that they never technologically progress. The last time there's technological progression in Bitcoin, really, I mean, we've had the ordinals phenomenon, but prior to that, I mean, it's been a long time. We're talking, we're talking in the decade range. I know Bitcoin purists would definitely fault me on that timeline, but you know, as far as meaningful technological innovation, it's not like a network like Cardano, where you have constant innovation. You have multiple scaling plans. Uh, state channels are it, that's just one part of our scaling strategy, and arguably, arguably not the biggest. I think we we all kind of think at this point that import input endorsers are sort of the end game. And Hydra is just sort of like one prong in our multi-pronged attack. Not in Bitcoin, it's all Lightning Network. And here we see one possible ramification of that single strategy. What about the robbery forest? We can't forget about the robbery forest. One of the most interesting posts, one of the most interesting videos, and most interesting commentary I've seen about the robbery forest has been this over the last couple of weeks from Vinay Gupta. And he's kind of, for the record, I don't know how much of what he says is true. I wasn't there, but this is what he's saying. He, uh, let me put it this way. I, we all knew there was someone is making the decisions over in the robbery forest. And I don't mean on the robbery side, but just the administration of that forest where all the robbery is happening. There is actually some decision making going on over there. I mean, there's an organization of some type with, you know, different elements of decentralization and centralization, but decisions are being made over there. I've been looking for the perfect description of this form of, you know, non-decentralized governance. I think, you know, I've I, I've made the claim that I think the the FOMC meetings held at the Fed are actually more decentralized than the the decision making in in Ethereum, at least the organized, formalized decision making, because they don't have any kind of formalized on chain governance, the kind that Cardano was putting in place with Voltaire. So I would argue that as far as formalized governance mechanisms, the FOMC appears to be more decentralized than. Ethereum. There appear to be more people actually involved in the decision-making pro process in an FOMC meeting. But I've been looking for the perfect label to put on whatever this form of decision-making is that goes on over there in the robbery forest. And Vinay Gupta, he, if I'm understanding him correctly, he's calling it a Lambocracy. Basically, he's saying that a lot of money was made in Ethereum and it could have gone to, it could have been used to do great things in the world. Instead, it bought Lambos and it's produced this Lambocracy. But listen, listen to what he has to say. And as a result, we're in a position so where we got all the fraud and what, what they're doing is this. You've got tick half a billion dollars all the things that, that money should have achieved right? in the yeah. world. You can't and sell half a billion dollars worth of ether without crashing the ether price. Right? So what you're looking what for is ways of turning of your money into money in ways which don't crash the ether exactly price. What exactly did they put back dollars. into the ecosystem? Mm -hmm. 
right? This is the core goal. So and what they they've discovered is a whole bunch of weird protocols that allow people to borrow, to lend money, uh, lend their ether out, and then claim interest on the ether, which is then paid in real currencies. So what we're doing is we're building a whole kind of speculative leverage market. You've got a thousand ether. Um, you want to buy more ether because you think the price is going up. So you borrow money against your thousand ether into another token. Then you sell those tokens for more ether, and so you've got all of this kind of leveraged uh, financialization stuff going on. The critical thing is that it's all zero sum. Every yeah. penny made in these markets is being lost somewhere else in the system. And frankly, if I'd understood how little enforcement there was going to be from the SEC and the degree to which we would have been on our own, I would have opened my mouth in a much louder fashion much earlier about what was happening. Right? Yeah. I assumed government was going to come along and punish the evildoers in this field. And in fact, nobody has punished the evildoers. The evildoers have cashed out at the bank, and what they've destroyed in the process is the reputation of Ethereum. And as a result, we're in a position where we got all the fraud and none of the leadership just tick off all the things that that money should have achieved in the world, and what it actually achieved was Lambos. Right? What was the point of the Lambocracy? What exactly did they put back into the ecosystem? Right? And the answer is, not a goddamn thing. I don't know too much about the video we just watched. Obviously, that was a sampling of a sampling of a couple different interviews. I don't know when these took place, and there's going to be some missing context there. However, regardless of any missing context, I think this is a pretty good indication that there are people out there who are pretty unhappy with the way things have turned out in Ethereum. Speaking of unsettling things in crypto, we have to pay a little bit of attention to other markets, including the equities markets and the real estate market. Listen to this. Three years ago, the average 30-year mortgage was 2.98%. The median existing home price in the US was 294K. Currently, the mortgage rate is 7.23%, and the median home price is 440,000. Does that sound sustainable to you? Continuing our trend of unsettling items, this was probably one of those news pieces last month. And this news is a couple of weeks old, but Last month, I think this was maybe one of the things that caused the most outrage in the Cardano community, and probably for good reason. So I think a lot of people may have seen this coming, and a lot of people who are big fans of Meld may not have seen this coming. So I'm just going to play the audio clip for you. And, you know, this, this was posted as, you know, Meld CEO said, literally said they're not building anything on Cardano by his own tongue. That is problematic if you are a fan of Cardano and a fan of Meld. But here's the clip. I just wanted to know, is there anything coming out on Cardano itself? I know Meld is an agnostic thing. I understand that. But people are confused. Is there anything coming out on Cardano itself? As a protocol, as of right now, no. Right now, we're focused on bridging um, and connecting that. We have a multi-sig wallet that we're talking to other protocols about using. But outside of that, we don't have any other products that we're planning on rolling out on Cardano as of right now. No surprise, this left a lot of people very unsatisfied. Here are some of the reactions. Not impressed, me either outrageous cardano on mass needs to walk away it's so annoying these people should be reported to the sec gov and punished again if you're just listening that's not anything i'm saying that's i'm something i'm reading i'm reading a comment here but here's here's somebody coming to defend them a little bit this person says please stop spreading fud they are not developing on cardano since they are waiting for iohk to solve an issue here's a message from meld discord we as meld will launch on cardano currently we are in talks with iohk to solve it can't give you an eta but we will launch Obviously, the other really big controversial thing in Cardano DeFi in the last month has been the whole Muesli Swap saga. I will admit to being a little biased. Muesli Swap is kind of near and dear to my heart because they were the first Cardano 
Dex. They were the first Dex to launch on Cardano. And people gave them a pretty rough time because they were sort of a dark horse. Nobody knew who they were. We didn't know if they were legit or not in the early days. And it turned out they really were a legit Dex. They were an order book Dex. And then they beca became a, an AMM Dex. And so I'll always have a lot of respect for Muesli Swap for being the first Dex on Cardano and for being an order book Dex, which I think you know makes a lot of sense in the UTXO context. However, there was a lot of controversy about Muesli Swap and their off-chain batchers and off-chain batchers taking certain fees and who those batchers were, all those kind of things. I haven't consumed all the news there, so I'm not even going to attempt to address that. There was a ton of coverage of that over the last month. Probably a lot of you have already seen it. I'm not going to attempt to, to address that. Not right now, at least. But I will address something we also talked about. We've also been talking about for a long time. Something we've been talking about as long as we've been talking about DEXs on Cardano and Muesli Swap and all the rest of them. And that is the most predictable Chinese economic news ever. You'll remember, if you've been listening to this channel for a long time, you'll remember years ago, I was talking about Evergrande and the role it played in Chinese real estate and the role real estate plays in the Chinese economy, the levels of investment the normal person had in real estate as opposed to equities markets and other things like a lot of uh, consumers in Western economies would be invested in. Instead, they were in real estate. It played a huge role. And people were trading condos that had never been lived in, had never been furnished, had never even been finished in a lot of cases. They were trading these condos like commodities. And this led to this whole ghost tower phenomenon in China that we've talked about many times on this channel and ghost villages and ghost cities. We talked about all those things. And it was very obvious even a couple of years ago, actually several years ago, even before I started this channel, a lot of people were talking about this. ADV China famously went to some of these ghost cities, showed these crumbling towers that had never even been lived in. They were only a couple of years old and they were literally peeling cement off the pillars holding up these buildings and finding undesirable materials underneath it's been obvious that there was a problem with real estate in china and especially with this the most famously troubled com company evergrande finally we've gotten to that point where Ever evergrande filed for bankruptcy People are going to shrug this off. People are going to say, this was a long time coming. Everybody knew about this. This is no big deal. This doesn't mean anything. But the fact that such a troubled company, maybe the most famously troubled gigantic company in the entire world, finally had to file for bankruptcy. This is, this is a moment where we leave one era and enter another. I don't think anybody really knows where this goes. But in any case, I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you're looking forward to a fantastic week and I'll talk to you soon.